after that, you you landed a more feature role in 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 Sweet Jesus Preacher Man. Yes, my girlfriend and I had a habit of going around seeing where they were shooting stuff and finding our way in into it. So we go to the studios. And we walk around, we get on the lot, and then we walk around to all the offices with our resumes, like we thought that was really going to do it. <laughs> and uh, we ended up in um, David O. Selznick's 20th Century Fox in his daughter's office. She had an office there. And she took us in and set us down and gave us a whole lecture on what the business was about. And we told her we were actresses, and she says, no, you're students. Mm. <laughs> so she ran it down to us. But we appreciated it because she was very nice. Speaking of students, did you take any acting, acting lessons at all? Oh, yes. We were at um, PASLA, Performing Arts Society of Los Angeles, which was on Vermont. We were at 84th. It was down by 86th Street, two blocks from us, from where we started our school. And... Uh, we learned that Tatanisha from room 222 had gone there, so we wanted to go there. And so they charged us $3 for our clipboard, and we were in. We were in a storefront, and all the walls were painted black, the stage was painted black, and we were just excited. So one day after class, we just went and stood on the stage and said, we're up here. <laughs> so this all started when you were in your early 40s. Well, you see, I'm 30 now, so <laughs> it must have been when I was... <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Did you, did you have any reservations for start? Like, most people feel like they got to start young, early in life, in a certain career. No. What gave you the confidence to just say, I'm going to do it now? I didn't say I'm going to do it now. I just said I'm going to do it. <laughs> you don't think about age. You think about what you want to do. And I was taking classes. Uh -huh. And we were doing plays, and we were very excited about the whole process. Roger Mosley was in the class mm. at, at uh, Pasla. And then we went to Mafunde because the man who was running Pasla had gone to Washington, D.C., and he came in charge of, I can't think of the organization, but it's a big organization. And uh, Van Tau Whitfield was his name. And... So there was an argument in the, at Paslo about who was going to run it after him. And so we got tired of that. And Roger Mosley had gone over to Mafundi. So we decided to go over to Mafundi too. And, and while we were at Mafundi, they did a play, Native Son, over at Watts Writer's Workshop, which Roger Mosley starred in. And Angela and I starred in it also. And uh, so... We had a, a big scene with a rat, and uh, so we didn't have a rat, so I made a rat out of gray cloth and uh, pipe stems, and Angela sat next to me and watched me make it, and I was wrapping the tail with masking tape, and she got up and ran, and I said, you saw me make it. <laughs> She's afraid of rats. <laughs> Angela is, is your all. daughter, is one, is one of your, uh, your, your three children. And her career and your career, you started together. Actually, she started, well, we started together in plays and things, but she, she was in the business before I was. Wow. She did um, Cleopatra Jones. While we were at Mufundi, uh, I can't think of the man's name, who, uh, who wrote it and produced it. But he saw her on the stage, and he put her in Cleopatra Jones. Very and interesting. I went to visit her on set, and she was in a, her own dressing room. She had her own, what do you call it? <laughs> she had her, you know, the things we have when you go on. Mm -hmm. So, and I was in a basement changing clothes with Sweet Jesus Preacher, man. I had no idea how she got all that. <laughs> and then she was in Sanford and Son. So we went to see her in Sanford and Son. And 
Classic. Then things started to happen for me. Yeah. But before that, it was going for, I think she had the young nurses she starred in, and she had a motorcycle. And they asked if she could, <laughs> could drive a motorcycle. She said yes. She got on the mic and she was going like three miles an hour. And it was a chase, and you see the man, the other bicycle running, then you see her going. <laughs> It was hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> then she decided acting was not relevant, so she went off to college, and I stayed in the business. And, and is, is this around the time you uh, landed the Jeffersons? Yes. I was, I was working at the Zodiac Theater, Margaret Avery's workshop, and I had done two or, th two or three plays there. So I was in the middle of a production, and I heard they were casting for a new series, The Jeffersons, and my agent, by now I'm with, um, oh, come back mine, not Lil Cumber, but Lillian, mm -hmm. Lillian Randolph, I'm with her. And I went to the audition, and I had been in Norman Lear's office twice before, and it was just I wasn't there, they talked all around me. And uh, so, so I was disappointed, but this time when I went in, she was talking to me because my agent had written a letter to the Hollywood Reporter saying that she didn't understand why her people were not seen like everybody else. We were like a revolving door in and out. So now everybody wanted to see us. So they paid particular attention to me. I read this script and it reminded me of my grandmother and my aunt in Chicago. So that's how I delivered it. And she liked it, so she had me wait. She took me over to the producers. I did it for them, and uh, they liked it. So by the time I got home, I had a call to come back. And uh, so the rest is history. I got the part. But I was just a guest star. I was not on the series. It was just a guest star part. And, and, but you eventually became? But I delivered the line, how come we overcame and nobody told me. And Norman liked that so much, especially since my daughter and my boyfriend fell out into the aisle laughing when I said it. And he said, oh, that was the two people. And they were so excited. They were, I didn't tell him that was my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so they wrote something else for me on the fifth episode. And they wrote something else on the eighth episode. And then they offered me the part. So I, I had a contract for the next season for seven out of 13. Wow. And and you you literally stole some of those scenes and some of those episodes with legendary actors like Sherman Hemsley and you know um, everybody else who was. I don't cast. think you can steal anything from Sherman. <laughs> well, let's say y'all met y'all met at the at the same level in in a lot of those scenes. What was that like? What what was the chemistry like? How did that? Was it improv? Was it all scripted? How did you guys work that out? Well, everything is scripted, mm -hmm. but I would change the rhythm of it. My thing has to be in my rhythm. And the director would say, we know, we know it's not in your rhythm. <laughs> so sometimes I would take Mr. Jefferson where they had it in the front and put it in the middle or put it at the end so that it flowed. Because I would tell them black people flow. I said, Jewish people punch things. Italian people do another thing. I said, but we say the whole sentence, you know. I said, my grandma said, if you don't, if you don't get up from there, I'm going to knock you to the moon. She just say the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands that rhythm because they've heard it. Right. They don't have to be black, but they've heard somebody black say it, and they know the rhythm. If you're sitting on a bus and you hear, um, say, a Hispanic person talking, and, but they're not Hispanic, as long as they're in the right rhythm, you never turn around, but if... If they don't sound right, you turn around and see who's talking. Mm -hmm. Same with Asians, because we all understand each other's rhythm. We can't speak it, but we understand it. Right. So that's what I would tell them. So then they would leave me alone, because out of that one sentence, I might get two laughs instead of one, or get three laughs instead of one. So they liked that. So they kind of left me alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, would, that, that, that was good, because you obviously was was definitely um, successful at doing it your way. Um, what what's some what's some of your more fonder memories of 
of that time and doing that show. Well, especially working with George. George, we had a chemistry. And uh, he would say sometimes, Marla, I don't know, I don't know the lines. I said, yes, you do. He said, he said, no, I didn't look. I said, your mind took a picture of them the first time you saw them and they're in there and they'll come out as long as you stop, if you stop saying, I don't know my lines. I said, once you say, I know it. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll say something and you, you just wait till my lips stop moving and if it makes sense, you respond to what I say, that's all. He said, I knew that. <laughs> and that's how we performed all the time. Sometimes he would forget the line and I would know he forgot it and I'm waiting for him to, to speak. I said, I ought to bring my neighbor's kids over here. And waiting and waiting and waiting. Finally he'd say, why? He couldn't think of why. I said, because this place is better than a zoo. <laughs> <laughs> But while we're waiting, I'm just looking at him chewing gum, and he's looking at me. And we started getting laughs out of just looking at each other. So they left it in there. So it worked. Was there any, uh, any friction on the set? Was, was there anybody that was difficult to work with? No, not really. Isabel, I think, was a little upset because we were getting so much attention and people don't realize what they're saying. They say, you make the show, and they say stuff like that in front of her, which was mm -hmm. not nice. Right. And uh, then they tried paying her less than they paid Sherman. But her agents made her stay in her room and not come to the set until they got the money. She was a nervous wreck, but she stayed in her room. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes she would get upset with me because I changed the lines. While we're working, I'd end up changing the lines. And she'd say, is that what you're going to say? I said, not if you don't want me to, Miss Jefferson. <laughs> and that would tickle her. <laughs> so then we'd go on. So I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't change it. I'd make, make it what she wanted to, it to be.